Ooh, okay, so this is a first draft of a, a demo video I want to do showing you how I set up my uh, physics system in Super Space Galaxy. So uh, this isn't actually going to be editing Super Space Galaxy, but uh, I'll show you vaguely how it's done. So uh, you start by making a new object, that is, let's just make it active, okay. And active objects have uh, variables you can ask them to have. They're, they're known as alterable values in Click Team. I still kind of call them variables. You make new ones like that. And uh, the, the main four ones actually have uh, Z values as well. You want the X value and a Y value and a, a X speed and a Y speed. So uh, that will now govern the position of the object. And also, it's best to put it into a group in here that you can then use as physics objects. So yeah, let's choose physical objects as the, the group. It can be any group, but we'll use that as kind of the identity for them. And uh, then you go in and uh, what I tend to use is the flags. So each object also has, I think, how many flags? It, it's, it's 32 flags. I tend to use flag zero as its physics flag. So you have, uh, you do flag is off, you set it the right, yeah, so yeah, set it on. And uh, the trick is when the object is first, so when the object is first created, it will have its flag off and uh, it'll just be at a certain x and y coordinate. Like right now, this object is just existing at, I don't know, wherever this is, doesn't matter where. So you uh, stop by setting its x value to just its x coordinate, and then you set its y value to its y coordinate, and so far that doesn't really do anything, it'll just, it'll work. I'll add it to the debugger as well. So now when it's born, what we should see is that the uh, the debugger will show, yeah, so that's apparently it was at 128, 128, which is a nice enough bunch of numbers. Now, so far that doesn't really do anything. Oh, actually, sorry, let me uh, make that even. The physics objects, apply that to the physics objects, that's even better, and yeah, make sure we make that the actual x coordinate of the physical objects. So that will now apply to anything you tag as being a physical object. You might have to line up the alterable values the same. But there we go. That's a bit of an example of how uh, like picking an individual object like this object here or picking a group is going to change things. And uh, now what you want is that uh, when its flag zero is on, we want to have it change its position based on those variables. So now now that it's kind of been physicsized, set its x coordinate to its x value, and we set its y coordinate to its y value. And so we now have it set up to kind of respond to those variables. And uh, I, I think the names of these variables, if you if you try to use the names here, if the names aren't the same for all the physics objects, it's not going to show x value. It'll kind of show value 0, 1, 2, 3, and it's hard to tell what they are. So I try to keep the names consistent. But uh, even that won't do anything yet. What you want to do is now just have a look at that. It's still sitting there. But uh, what you can do now, if I do a repeat while key is pressed right arrow, I can add to my x speed. Oh, I actually forgot a part of this. Add to my x speed, right? But except, right? We need also need to add to its x value, its x speed, and then we add to its y value, its y speed. So now those are like extra things that are adding to the position. Let's put those above it and rearrange the order of them. So now every program cycle, the x value is going to increase with the total of the x speed and the y value is going to increase with the y speed. And then it's going to change the position based on those variables. So it's, it matters what order you put these things in as well. So now we should have it so that if I hold down the right arrow key, 
it moves off because it, it's obeying the physics variables. And this does mean that if you want to change the position of your physics objects, you'll have to change their x and y values as well as just their regular click team x and y position. Click team does have kind of physics engine stuff in it, but I, I don't like it and I prefer the level of control I get here. So, uh, what else can I do? Yeah, and if I do do left, Let's add naught minus one to the speed. So now you can use left key will go over there. And what you get is this nice smooth movement. You wouldn't get this just adding numbers to it. Basically, if it goes up in integers, you're not going to get this nice smooth movement you're seeing here. It's not the same. It's just not. All the nice smooth movement you see in Super Space Galaxy comes from using this method, basically, as well as uh, time flow. In fact, I might actually show how I do time flow as well, because it's relatively easy to do. So uh, what if I make a new object that's going to hold all our variables, but they've increased the number of variables you're allowed to have in these things as well. I'll make this a time flow tutorial as well, just because I'm doing all this at once. So let's just call this variables. And then normally this is uh, just a me thing, but I like to change the icons up by giving them kind of a a letter to show you what they are. I might fast forward over this bit, but uh, so let's give it a V for variables. Makes it more obvious to me what it is, and you, you will thank yourself later. If you're making a game that's worth making, I think you're going to spend a long time building it, so it's worth just giving yourself the tools to make it easy. Let's just make it a big old V. So my projects are full of these uh, invisible objects. And uh, just for peace of mind as well, something you can do with invisible objects like this is you can turn off destroy object if too far from frame. So normally objects would just kind of disappear if they move too far away from the screen, which we don't really want with something like this. You can say don't be inactive if far from window, I guess. Yeah, and then I turn off use find detection as well because that's not needed for something like this. That makes its collision box a simple square. Oh, and I guess you could also make it not visible at the start. So now that's actually going to be invisible. It'll just kind of exist there purely off screen. And uh, did I put make a time flow? Yeah. So okay. So we, let's make it one. And let's say that. While I'm holding down T, let's set time flow to 0.2 or something. I normally find that to negate that, and we set time flow to 1 again. So I, I normally find that time flow, if it's not an event you're used to seeing, it's not obvious it's happening in slow motion, unless the slow motion is pretty extreme. So uh, let's see. So, firstly, this is an acceleration, so this is a time bound change. So uh, if you are using a, a time system, you want to multiply any time bound change by your time flow, which is, uh, there we go. Yeah, kind of hard to remember, but there it is. And uh, I'm trying to remember what else I need to do. Right, yeah, so this is also a time bound thing, so this the speed is gonna depend on the time flow. Right, so now, congratulations, you've got time flow in your game. And uh, so I now have this object at a normal time flow. This is normal time flow, it'll kind of accelerate left and right like this, depending on where I'm putting the arrow keys. But if I hold down T, you see it's going a lot slower and pretty easily even, you've got this cool slow motion effect. So I could do more about slow motion effects and things. I've done a blog post about it before. But now you've got nice smooth movement, a, uh, a time flowing thing on, on T, and you can have a bunch of rules. Oh, and I think you can even reverse time. I, I tried that earlier. I wasn't experimenting with this stuff, so that's going to be harder to do. And there you go. You've got yourself physics and time flow. Bada boom.